Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. Let's talk books now with director of the Brandhest Foundation and leading expert on African affairs, Greg Mills, has recently released a new book titled Expensive Poverty, Why Aid Fails and How It Can Work. The book seeks to answer why aid spending has had such a small impact on improving African lives and shows how aid can be a great disruptor for progress. And to tell us more about some of the answers to this question, he, uh, here is uh, uh, Greg with the details. Uh, Dr. Mills, uh, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning to you. Give us a brief break, uh, breakdown of what this book is about and why you felt the need to put it together. Well, thank you for having me on your show. I mean, I've, I've been working at this question for the last 30 years. Uh, both from an academic perspective and also from the perspective of a practitioner, actually trying to put plans in place in countries. Uh, and I try to gather these learnings, personal learnings, professional learnings together, uh, in order that others don't make the same mistakes in part, but also that we should really try and find a better way. There's been over a trillion dollars of aid expended in Africa for the, over the last 30 years. Um, and that's an extraordinary amount of money by anybody's standards, but we have very little comparatively to show for it. So I thought it would be useful to try and depolarize the debate on aid to make it less binary, as it were, and try and understand why aid does not deliver development in the manner that we would hope. And particularly when we are so concerned about growing inequality and poverty, why it's such a blunt instrument. Uh, and, of course, this is a debate that's been widely recognized. It's been recognized in official circles. You, you saw recently that in the UK, the, their Foreign and Commonwealth Office merged with their Department of International Development precisely because of this question. And there are lots of, lots of cases in the world where aid has actually been spent well. Mm. So I thought it would be useful to learn from these through the lens of my own personal experiences and hence the book. I want to touch on some of the reasons why aid fails and how it can work better. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it fails for a whole variety of reasons. Fundamentally, it fails because it's given to countries that the donors know are going to squander it because they're weak, which is why they get it in the first instance. Uh, it's, it's a little like, if I could use a metaphor, giving somebody who has not the capacity to build a house money and then they squander it. And you say, but why didn't you spend it on your house? Well, they said, well, we don't know how to build a house. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, you know, that's so it's given for reasons other than development often. It's often given for reasons which have much more to do with the country giving it and the interests that they give it in rather than actually wanting to affect development or stability or whatever it is that the donor seeks. Mm -hmm. um, it's often given for strategic purposes. So... While the, the countries might say we want to promote development, and there's a very close correlation, as the book argues, between development and systems of political management, in other words, democracy, uh, and the better the democracy in Africa, certainly the better the developmental outcomes. So, so donors will give money to countries which are obviously heading in the other democratic direction, but they do so because they have strategic interests of their own. And in fact, that was one of the reasons which motivated me to write the book. I uh, overheard a conversation between Bobby Wine, who uh, he and I have done a song together with Robin Ald for the book. But Bobby Wine was asked by Americans uh, uh, what they should do to help him and to help Ug Ugandans, which were facing who were facing oppression. And he didn't. He didn't say. We, he said we want. We don't want anything. But just don't fund our oppressor. Mm. So the strategic interest that drove that funding to the Ugandan regime was actually uh, a, a counter to democratic progress. So there are lots of reasons why money is spent badly, uh, but mostly it's spent badly because of, of the mismatch between the ambition and the reality on the ground. And hence, you have these grand plans mm -hmm. and very little delivery. And there are ways to fix this. Talk to us about those ways. Well, the book <clears throat> says, which is probably quite unpopular, that we shouldn't um, 
go about trying to do the grand schemes. You know, everyone talks about a Marshall Plan for Africa. Uh, that's just political rhetoric. It rolls out every four or five years, and it's it's like a stuck record, and it's pretty meaningless. The Marshall Plan worked because there were the inner stuffings in those European countries, in spite of the devastation of war, to recover those countries. So the, the question is really about trying to calibrate aid better to the circumstances in which countries find themselves, so you don't have that, that mismatch. Um, and I think fundamentally, in a macro sense, the answer lies in better strategy, which is the knitting together of people, process, and institutions, which we don't do. We often give money with very short-term aims in mind. And it fundamentally has to be about this calibration between politics and development. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's often said that, you know, war is the failure of politics. But I would extend that and say that the failure to develop is also the failure of politics. Mm. So we need to look at how aid can be better linked and aligned to the political realities of countries. And we try and give them a bigger stake in their success. And it advances several ways in which that can occur. On smaller things like infrastructure, and it's not small at all, of course, it's a, there's a lot of money required to be spent on African infrastructure. You know, one of the one of the things has been this enormous amount of cash being spent on infrastructure and very large percentages of, of it wasted. And then, of course, the debt that remains behind from these uh, rather, rather costly schemes then has to be borne by following generations. It becomes an incredible pressure for these countries. One of the ways around this, of course, is to have those that build the infrastructure operated mm. so that the plot prices are not overinflated, that a revenue model for the, for the, uh, to, to gather back that money, to actually turn it into a, a profitable, uh, reasonable enterprise rather than a gouging episode is actually built into the system. There are lots of practical solutions out there, but again, we have to match politics with money, politics, with development, in order to be able to answer them effectively for the benefit of African people. And I'll just add, finally, that this book was written because there's a significant change coming in Africa, which means we must end business as usual. Mm -hmm. The continent's going to double its population over the next generation, and we have to find new and better ways to do things. We can't just expect different results out of the same ways in which you've done things for the last 20 years. And that's really what this book's about. It's, a, it's an offer to try and find ways to do things better because of the realization if we keep just doing what we're doing at the moment, the answer is probably likely to be the same as it has been in the past, which is lots of money wasted and lots of frustration and poverty uh, and friction as a consequence. Now, the book contains a couple of stats, and one of them being that Africa has received $1.2 trillion in development assistance since 1990. Tell us about this and how you break it down in the book. Yeah, well, it's, it's the annualized amount of money received over the last 30 years. I, I, I discounted the money that was given before uh, 1990 because of the Cold War context, and a lot of money, of course, was given for for reasons related to that conflict and had no development attachment to it whatsoever. So really focused on the post-1990 period, and it's $1.2 trillion. But that excludes a lot of private giving. That's what you call official development assistance. That's money that's tracked uh, between a group of donors uh, and, and African countries. So to that can be added probably a, a, another trillion dollars, mm -hmm. more or less, in private giving, in private charities, money that channels to Africa outside of official circles. And on top of that, of course, you have new donors, China, Turkey, Iran, Russia, you know, and the Middle Eastern countries, for example, which have been relative newcomers in the donor scene. So the figure is, is, is quite extraordinary, really, uh, in terms of money as, and in terms of development. It's, it's, of course, pales by comparison, and the book also goes into where, where there have been extraordinary failures, like Afghanistan, for example, where I've spent some time. You know, over $2 trillion it was expended in Afghanistan in just 20 years, uh, a lot of it, again, on military issues. 
uh, rather than on developmental issues. Uh -huh. But a lot of the one, a lot of the one point two trillion dollars in ODA was spent really on development. Now, All right. one of the challenges is, of course, that a lot of that money is spent on those who give it. Mm -hmm. So instead of being spent on the countries for which it's intended, it's spent on consultants, look, people look like me, mm -hmm. uh, uh, back home and on services back in the donor countries. Yeah. And clearly that's not a particularly efficient way of doing this, although it's part of the great political game that lies behind aid. Uh, Hence the title, all right. which uh, is expensive poverty. You spend lots of money. It costs the taxpayers of those countries huge, huge amounts of money over a very long period of time. And what you have at the end of it, in fact, is rising poverty rather than development. Okay, Dr. Greg, thank you so much for talking to us. That's all the time we have uh, today. Dr. Greg Mills, and he has just joined us on Zoom to discuss his latest book titled Expensive Poverty, Why Aid Fails and How It Can Work. All right, we take a break. We say good morning to our SABC2 viewers after this. Stay with us.